Hey there, container geeks. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, we have an out of this world modification for you. So our customer here is dedicated to solving medical challenges pertaining to human space flight. So this unit here, they're gonna be doing all sorts of testing in remote areas of the planet like Antarctica and Mars simulated environments. And so that's a, that's a huge compliment to us here at the Container Guy. Uh, you know, we, we appreciate the fact that people from all over the planet are looking to us here in small town Saskatchewan to be building structures like this. And so we've taken this very seriously. And in this video, I'm gonna show you everything that we've done to improve our system. So we've improved our window kits, our AC kits, the way that we finish a lot of the interior. We have mounting kit for solar panels, this thing, when it does get to a remote location. And then finally, uh, even some small tweaks to our man door. So in this video, I'm gonna showcase all of that. Hope you learned something. Before we dive into the real life product changes, I'd like to share with you this amazing 3D animation that takes you through the entire job from start to finish, giving you a comprehensive view of our scope of work. Let us know in the comments below what you think of these awesome animations. Should we keep providing them to you? And while you're at it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more exciting shipping container related content. Hope you enjoyed that. Now, let's jump right into the action. We've adjusted our door frame a little bit. Uh, after we made a 32 inch door, which would be four inches uh, narrower than this, that's really gonna fit nicely in our 20 foot office containers. We learned something and that allowed us to change the way that the, the ends connect on these door frames. And if you buy a kit off us and you have to assemble the kit yourself, because we have to ship the slab separate of the door frame, the frame's gonna kind of hold itself together better before you rivet everything, and, and that just makes it easier for the customer or end user to put these things together. It's, it's yeah, it's quite, quite simple now, so we enjoy that. Another thing, we have our CSM roof brackets, we call them. I think they're inappropriately named. They should just be like a solar panel bracket is what they should be called, because what they do is they allow you to build a whole strut uh, structure on the roof of a container. Now you have a perfectly modular roof where you can build awesome solar panel arrays that fold up and tilt outwards and we also uh, the profile of the holes allow you to use the the exterior csm brackets and then you can strut the side of a container and you can do solar panels that flare out as well and so uh, that's just something cool there they, they don't know if they're going to use them but i think yeah potentially if this does get commissioned to go up north or wherever somewhere in a remote location they might try to to use that cool feature there. So those are awesome brackets. If anyone's looking to install solar panels, uh, using a container as your foundation rather than building some sort of ground array, I think it's an amazing way to go. You could use uh, bifacial solar panels where they are glass on both sides and a nice white container like this where uh, if there was something blocking one panel but the sun reflecting and hitting the back of your can keeps your panel from dropping the efficiency down, perfect. So yeah, I think that's a pretty cool option there. Those are available to purchase. They're on Amazon, they're on uh, our website. So check us out, tcg.ca, you can buy them there. Another thing that's fun and exciting to see in this uh, mod job here is that we finally uh, tested out our 42 inch windows. These are awesome. The typical 36 inch window used to be three inches inwards on either side and we needed the interior flashing piece. So this now, we can fill this with spray foam, do a nice cock job around the edges, and we will be able to delete those two parts. Plus, if we jump outside, we'll be able to check out the frame and see how sleek it is. And so here it is. This is the new Container Modification World 42 inch window framing kit. It is so much thinner than before, 42 wide and 30 inches tall. It's, it's a rectangular shape and so are containers. So a lot of times when you put a, a square window, a 36 by 36 in the side of a container, 
doesn't architecturally look right. You know, you like to kind of match that, that uh, rectangular shape of a container. This window, this right here, is why we're switching to 42 inch windows on the sides of shipping containers. These framing kits now are 60% of the steel that was in the previous version. So they're lighter, they're easier to ship any minute now if they aren't already. They'll be uh, available to purchase either on Amazon, these framing kits, or check out our website, tcg.ca, or on containermodificationworld.com. Find them there. Here we can see the outside of these 16 inch exhaust fans. Uh, it's just a larger version of the 10 inch that we've installed prior. A lot of people want those for when they're running generators or, or things of that nature. You know, the oil field, especially in Alberta, tons of those things around. This here is just that uh, exterior AC condenser box not put together. So we'll check on this in a bit once the guys get a bit further. Over here at the end wall, this T16, the 16 inch AC Infinity fan. So we went to a 16 inch and that allowed our frame now can fit perfectly between the strut channel that's two corrugations on center. Uh, that just fits perfectly in there. I love the way that looks. You know, there's a, there's a lot of times in the year where you can just use the ambient temperature outside as your, uh, your air conditioning rather than running an air conditioner spring and fall. So uh, in this modification here, it's got the, the vinyl sliding windows. So that'll act as the intakes when the operator is turning these specific uh, exhaust fans on. These AC condenser boxes on the inside of a container, they look awesome. They're basically a workbench and one would think it's a cabinet, but it's a non-functioning cabinet because of the condenser units out there. Uh, you can see here, we got a stainless steel worktop and then the galve here. Uh, and then I think maybe there's a little boo-boo with the misalignment of the laser cut hole, but even just small things like that, trying to get the hole in the exact spot of where a plumber needs it just to speed up his install of the head unit. So I see the exhaust fans right above here. The head unit will probably mount relatively close. I'm not sure actually, or maybe on the end wall, who knows? That's something that I believe actually the, the customer, they're gonna be doing all their own electrical and plumbing in this, so they get to decide. I'm happy with the profile of it, just some corners to clean up, but all in all, it's a step in the right direction for the way that we're doing these industrial mods. Here's the outside view of this door-to-door -door connection kit. So these now, we learned from the previous time when we did it, we fastened these into that hard part of the corner post again, and that, you know, break and drill bits and just difficult to get to. So we now are just right angle securing them into there. It's a hollow section, so we're not poking right through. And then the two flanges come together real nice this time, and we're able to just bolt that up. Uh, we still have the covers over the high capacity bridge fittings up at the top. And then one thing that I mentioned earlier is the two containers are slightly different. And so now the top cap isn't sitting perfectly level, which we don't like. So something we learned if we were to do this from scratch, I'd be making sure that I select two of the same containers just to avoid that possibility of deviation. So when we jump inside here, we can get a nice view of this end-to-end -end connection kit, how it all fits together. And then another thing that's really new in this project is our container, what we call wall flashing kits. So this would typically work when the container doors are still on and the door flashing kit would come right up to these. We've struggled quite a bit with the older versions because we had to drill on an angle and it was a drill bit eater. It would constantly be breaking drill bits. So this has been changed to be multiple pieces. So now we just have to fasten right into the hollow corner post, which is just a nice 90 degree drill. Don't break anything. And then also we've separated this now into multiple pieces. So before when, you know, on a high cube, it was almost nine feet tall. Now we can break this apart and put it in a box that's just four or five feet long and ship this anywhere in the world. So if you're looking to buy these now, they're finely refined uh, between the wall flashing kits and door flashing kits. It is the absolute best way to finish up the, the door end of your container while keeping them operational and, and very well insulated. Uh, another thing new here is this whole end-to-end -end connection kit has been re revised. Uh, we can see the container doors. This is where the hinges were and we've cut them off and removed them. And so now we have these, these bottom threshold plates that will uh, allow you to whatever. You could even drive a forklift off these things. I'm amazed how, how well they worked, even just given that it's a, a flat steel. But we went, went, went with a heavy gauge here to make sure that it does handle uh, definitely foot traffic, but even things driving across. 
the high capacity bridge fittings are what we use in this instance. So we can basically have these two containers fully loaded, connect them together and just still handle it with our top lift like we normally would with a 40 foot container. They leave a three inch gap between the containers and so a lot of people would think 20 feet, 20 feet plus three inches, 40 feet, three inches. But an interesting note is that 20 foot containers are actually 19 feet, 10 and a half inches long. So when you bring the two of them together plus the three inch gap, now we're at a perfect 40 foot container. So you'll see on this wall flashing kit, we actually put the flange right there. So now we can connect our reline wall panels to here and to the next strut strap. So we can just finish that very nicely. It's all thought about ahead of time and on a perfect plane. Another thing that's new here is the bottom and top brackets to install these. So we have a specific, we call it a strut strap bracket. So this is the base and we have an upper two-way bracket. The guys really like these because, so the guys in the shop, they hate me for these new brackets. We thought they were so cool. Uh, I don't know how many we ordered. Hopefully we didn't order 500 of them already. With the wings on them, on the front face of the strut channel, they're having to notch every piece of reline and all of the J channel. And I guess it was just a complete nightmare to install. So let's give you a final tour of this thing. Uh, there's a lot of new developments in this. This is, uh, this is our bread and butter. This is our industrial and commercial container modifications. This is what we provide most of our customers. I know a lot of you want us to be building all these tiny homes, container homes, but that's actually not what the container guy does. Uh, we got a lot of industrial mining uh, style customers, even just commercial farmers. That's, we're here in Saskatchewan and, and that's, our, that's our people, that's our folks. So the windows, great new development, these 42 inch windows, the same kit is gonna be available in 48 inch on the end walls of containers. We've refined our container door flashing kits, uh, even our wall flashing kits. And one thing that if you're looking to purchase these, we've split them into two four foot pieces rather than a long eight foot. Same thing at the header. And now these things fit very nicely in a box and can ship anywhere in the planet. So if you want these, they're available to you now. Uh, we've been trying to do that with all of our parts is to break them down so that they're more shippable. What else do we got? The air conditioner condenser boxes. These things are deadly. They're gonna, and mini splits are the way of the future. So this is going to uh, totally help us advance the way that we heat and insulate containers. Uh, 32 inch doors coming out soon. These are still the 36s in them. It's going to be, you know, the least amount of material and the least amount of work to make the best envelope. And then, yeah, just the end wall. So happy how these finish up now uh, with the corner covers and everything, just totally reducing the amount of labor. I think we're pretty much ready now to start building our 20 foot ground level offices that are, I think, gonna be the, the golden standard for the industry of how to modify shipping containers. Yeah, I think other than the, the brackets that we tried out here that uh, my employees don't like, we're going back to the drawing board. This is a huge success and a huge development for our company and for our engineering. We've learned a lot from it and we are going to get these products you know, refined and available to you. I know everyone's upset at me a lot of times when I, when I tease you with these things and, and they're not available right away, but we're doing a ton of work here. We got you know, only so big of a team and, and we're advancing things. And, uh, the fenestration framing kits, we got all the electrical and HVAC frames, we're, we're doing structural kits, we're doing a lot here. And so if you enjoyed this video, please help us out, give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our channel and ring that bell for notifications. And as always, check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.